Welcome to THE 1020, Introduction to Theater with Bobby Bell. The Middle Ages in Constantinople in 692 AD. Emperor Justinian II convened the Council of Tula. Among the many laws for the church passed by this council were the excommunication of all actors and other theater practitioners and the outlawing of plays anywhere in Europe. While this had as much to do with Platonic philosophers winning the battle for control of the church's theological direction as it did with matters of Christian doctrine, it only formalized a growing hostility towards drama and effectively put an end to open forms of theater in Western culture for the next 400 years. Ironically, Western theater would be reborn in the worship services of the church and the tropes. One Easter trope in particular gave rise to the first short liturgical drama, Quim Gritis. Incident should come as no surprise that, like the springtime resurrection play of Osiris and the dithyrambs that celebrated the twice born Dionysus, the worship service that gives life to the theater is the one concerning resurrection and new life in the spring. Out of this small beginning developed the four basic types of theater in the Middle Ages liturgical drama represented by the Quem Coritis, miracle plays represented by Saint Apollonia, mystery plays represented by the creation and fall of Lucifer, man's disobedience and fall, and the Oberabergau passion play, morality plays represented by Castle of Perseverance and Everyman. Liturgical dramas were performed inside of the church and sung in Latin. Like stained glass windows, they sought to communicate biblical stories to a largely illiterate populace. Miracle plays and all the remaining types were done outside of the church in the vulgar or local language. Miracle plays presented the lives of martyrs and saints with stage effects and scenery. In this painting, you are seeing the staging of the martyrdom of Saint Apollonia. Apollonia was a Christian deaconess who was tortured to make her renounce her faith by having her teeth all pulled out. Then a fire was set up. When asked a final time if she would renounce her faith or suffer burning at the stake, she threw herself into the fire and died. Mystery or cycle plays would tell the story of the redemption of the human race from the story of creation to the last judgment day, with the central focus on the passion of Christ. The plays would last many hours and often an entire day. On the continent, as in this illustration of a French mystery play, the setting would consist of a large plateau or playing area which would have behind it all of the various scenic areas called mansions for the parts of the story. In mansion and plateau staging, the actors would begin the scene in the mansion, for example, of the creation of the world in Eden, and then step out onto the plateau area, which in the minds of the audience was still the Garden of Eden. At the end of the scene, the actors would exit back through their mansion. The next scene would then start in the mansion, say, for Noah's Ark, and then once again the performers would step out onto the plateau area to play the parts of the scene. This would take place all the way through the cycle to the fiery ending through the mouth of hell on the Day of Judgment. In England, they chose another means of telling the cycle of redemption through the use of pageant wagons that essentially brought the play to the audience. Each pageant wagon was an elaborate set on wheels depicting one portion of the cycle's story. The actors would travel inside of the wagon, which would perform the scene at several locations throughout the city. It might help to think of how floats in the Rose Bowl Parade or Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade work. On the day of the plays, usually during the Feast of Corpus Christi, plain wagons would be set up around town in areas where large groups of people could gather to watch. On the day of the play, the pageant wagons would pull up beside the plain wagon and actors would begin the scene inside the pageant wagon set and use the plain wagon as the plateau stage area. After their scene was done, they would move back into the wagon and it would be pulled to the next location. Meanwhile, the pageant wagon for the next part of the cycle would pull into the stage in its place, so that during the day, various parts of the play were simultaneously playing to different audiences. By the day's end, each group would see the entire play, as it were, brought to them. 
The Middle Ages are still with us in places like Oberammergau in Bavaria, Germany, where their Passion Play has been performed with only a few exceptions every ten years since its beginning in the year 1634. The origins of the play come from a promise that the citizens in Oberammergau made that if they were spared from the spread of the bubonic plague, they would put on a play honoring their faith for the rest of time. The plague deaths grew to a small number in 1633, and so to keep up their part of the bargain, the play has been performed every year ending in a zero since that time. The production is put on by the people who reside in Oberammergau, and there are strict residency requirements for participation. Some residents can trace their family's involvement back to the 1600s. In 1910, a local potter played the role of Jesus. The last production of the play in 2010 featured a local psychologist in the role. The theater has a roofed area that covers the audience and the orchestra, while the set for the actors is outdoors with the Bavarian countryside as backdrop. The morality play was a symbolic play with archetypal characters that sought to teach Christian lessons. The plays often dealt with good and evil battling for a human being's soul. The staging was often very inventive. In this surviving design for the Castle of Perseverance, a man-made moat was dug to create an artificial island on which was built the symbolic castle. Around the moat would sit the spectators to watch the action as players would begin their parts at various scaffolds around the moat, the world, hell, and God's realm. The costumes were lavish, especially Belial the Devil, who was equipped with fireworks in his hands and one protruding from his bottom to shower sparks when he ran across the stage. Every Man is probably the best known of the morality plays. In the play, a relatively wealthy everyman is enjoying his good life when God sends death to him to bring him to heaven for judgment. Knowing that he is not quite ready, everyman tries to bribe the devil to no avail. Death does grant him one small request, that he can have a companion for the trip. So he goes to his friends, who upon seeing death decide they have previous engagements. Every man then goes to his family, who once again find other things to be doing instead of going on a trip with death. He even asks wealth to go along with him since wealth has served him well, but not even wealth is up for a hike with death. Good deeds cannot go along because she is too weak from being starved, so little has every man tended to her. In the end, everything of the world forsakes him, and every man must journey alone. Facing his grave and judgment alone after making a confession and penance, every man is joined by good deeds who struggles to his side despite her weakness, and they journey into heaven together. Every Man is still with us as well, and is performed every year in the plaza in front of the Salzburg Dome or Cathedral, still following the unique staging by legendary director Max Reinhardt, who in 1920 conceived of the idea of the play and an international arts festival. With the church itself serving as backdrop, and the doors as entrances and exits, the play is performed on the stage set up to meld with the church, and is central to the yearly summer Salzburg Festival.